Say we're working with more kinds of statements, but we're going to have them in the if-then form. So that's what they're, um, so they're called conditional <coughs> statements. And then we're going to have a bunch of different ways that we can write them. Okay, so it's going to be kind of a lot of writing today. <coughs> so let's just figure out what a conditional statement is. So it's a statement written in if-then <coughs> form. And if we were to just write this in symbols, we would say P implies Q. There's a big arrow between them. P implies Q. Just like in like a science class, the hypothesis is the part that follows the word if. And then the conclusion is the phrase that follows the word then. You guys have done the scientific method right by now in science, right? Yeah. So the if and So we need to figure out what the hypothesis and conclusion are of those statements there. So if you live in Nashville, then you live in Tennessee. What is my hypothesis? Right, you live in Nashville. The part that followed the word if. Then what's our conclusion? You live in Tennessee. You live in Tennessee. Right. It's the same slide, right? <coughs> Is there a thing? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, I saw the picture that, like, uh, went there to your bridge. Which would choose you in order to buy a plane ticket, and then went through like a bunch of cities in like Texas wow. that were all all named in places that are in Europe. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like Paris, Texas. Those are real places. Yeah. I don't know if Texas left after that. They weren't really Texans. <laughs> I think you're going to Europe. I think you're going to Europe. In Texas, and I feel like that'd be a letdown. Nothing against Texas. I just. <laughs> no, there's everything. Okay, what about this one? If the sum of the measures of two angles is 90 degrees, then they are complementary. What is our hypothesis? The so measure of two angles is 90. Yep. The sum of the measures of two angles is 90 degrees, <coughs> which makes our conclusion they are complementary. complementary. Then our next part is we are asked to take a sentence and put it in if-then form. So an obtuse angle has a measure greater than 90 degrees. How could we write that in if-then form, Carter? If, a, if an angle has a measure greater than 90, then it is an obtuse angle. Is agree. You can write it that way. That works. Or you could say if an angle is obtuse, then it has a measure greater than 90. You can go either way. <laughs> Okay, 
going to go at all numbers divisible by 4 are also divisible <coughs> by 2. If the number is divisible by 4, then it can be divided by 2. Agreed? Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. We can find the truth value of a conditional statement, and what's nice is it's the same truth table for every single conditional statement. So it's kind of weird to think about, but no matter what your sentence is, the truth table holds true. Okay, so we're going to fill this one out together. It says, if Mitch gets cookies from the school store, then he will do his homework. Okay, that's our con conditional, right? It's an if and then a then. Okay. So is P the hypothesis? Yep. Yep, P would be our hypothesis, and then Q would be the conclusion. Mm -hmm. So let's just like put ourselves in Mitch's shoes. Okay, I'm Mitch. And I go I'm to the school Mitch. store, hi, and I buy cookies, right? So that's true. And then I follow through and do my homework. <coughs> so what would my overall truth value be of that sentence? <coughs> did I say what I was going to do? Yeah. Sure did. Yeah, too. True. Okay, I'm itch again. I go to the school store and I buy some cookies, but then I don't do my homework because that's false. So what's the overall truth value to my statement? False, because I didn't follow through like I said I was. I know. But now I mitch and I don't go buy school cookies. <coughs> so it's false, but then I do my homework. It is well, good, still false. So false. but it's still false because we don't really know what the implication is to not doing my homework. So actually, these both, they're both true because we didn't know what I was going to do. So by default, they're true. So really, the only time it's false in a conditional <coughs> statement is when your conclusion is false and your hypothesis is true. So I don't know if you want to like... Highlight it, star it, but that's the only time it is false. You didn't see what you were gonna do. Okay, let's try these. They're kind of goofy. It says, if the measure of a right angle is 95 degrees, then bees are lizards. Wow. Right? It's Thanks kind of out there. True. Jacob says true. Why is it true? The hypothesis is false. The measure of a right angle is 95 degrees? Is that true or false? <coughs> false. False. And when I had a false conclusion, what was my truth table? True. True. So have this out when you do your homework. It will definitely help you. So we'll say true because hypothesis was false. <clears throat> what about this one? If true. next month is August and this month is July, true. does Actually, August follow September. July? Sure does. True. true. Look at a calendar, right? They're both true. False. Do you live in Grand Forks and you live in Minnesota? True or false? False. False, because we all know Grand Forks is in North Dakota. North Dakota. <laughs> Long Canyon. 
Okay, and then our last part. <coughs> so we can take a conditional and then like mix it up. And we have different ways we can mix it up. <coughs> so the first way is an inverse. And an inverse is when you negate the hypothesis and conclusion. So that's where you put the word not in it. So not P implies not Q. So an inverse negates both the hypothesis and conclusion. <coughs> a converse just switches your hypothesis and conclusion. You flip the order. So then the statement would be then this and then if that. Well, you'd still say if, but you just put the other phrase. Oh. The if and then stay there, but the part that follows it will change. Okay. And then our last one, the contrapositive, does both. It negates it and flips it. So not Q implies not P. Why is it Q and P? Okay, let's try see these in action. So our phrase is, if it is Saturday, then there is no school. What would my inverse be? <coughs> if There's it's no not school. Saturday. If it's not Saturday, there is school. Right, so let's write that down. If it is not Saturday, then there is school. Good point. So is it true or false? False. False because what other day doesn't have school? Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> or Friday this week. What would our converse be? If there is no school, then it is Saturday. Right, we just flip the conclusion and hypothesis. So put the last part first. If there is no school. Friday, we're at PD. Or summer. Yeah, that is also true. Summer school. Saturday every day. Okay, and then our contrapositive, we flip them and negate both of them, so what would that say? If there is school, then it's not Saturday. What if you have a detention? Is that school though? You're in school. But, but you're right. But for the sake of this, can we call it true? 
So you yeah. don't technically go to school on Saturdays? Sometimes. So I realize that all this is new to you. Um, so have your notebook out when you do your homework. If it's true, we don't have to put it in the <laughs> So I'm just writing in case you write stuff down after you know it. 